All right, this is the practice for dividing polynomials, and I, as always, I am the amazing Mr. Jansen. So away we go. If we take a look at the first one, uh, I want to use synthetic division or long division here, and really synthetic division I want to use whenever possible. Uh, but for synthetic division, I need to be dividing by a binomial of the first degree with the leading coefficient 1. Since this is a w squared, it means I can't use synthetic division on this one. I have to use long division. So I'm going to set this up as a w squared plus 0w plus 3. Because remember, anytime I have a, a missing term in descending order, I want to put a 0 in its place. And I'm going to divide that into the 3w cubed plus 7w squared minus 4w plus 3. Now I look at the first values here. I look at the w squared, and I look at the 3w cubed, and I say, OK, w squared times what will give me the 3w cubed, which is a 3w. So now I multiply the 3w times what's out front. And again, I'm using my distributive property here. So I do 3w times w squared is a 3w cubed. 3w times the 0w is a plus 0w squared. And then 3w times the 3 is a plus 9w. And now what I want to do is I want to subtract this whole thing. And to make it easier, I'm going to change that to adding the opposite. So when I do that, I get a 0, I get a 7w squared, and I get a minus 13w. And then I bring down the next term, which is the plus 3. And I start the process over again. w times what will give me this guy down here, the, the 7w squared. So it's got to be a plus 7. So now I multiply. 7 times the w squared is a 7w squared plus 0. Uh, w plus 21. And now I subtract this whole thing. When I subtract, I'm going to change that to adding the opposite. So I end up with a negative 13w and a minus 18. And now from here, w squared can't divide into a negative 13w. So this is my remainder, the plus negative 13w minus 18, all over the thing I was dividing by, which was the w squared plus 3. And that's it. If I look at the, the, the next one, uh, this time I'm dividing by the uh, y squared plus 2y minus 1. And I want to divide that into this 6y uh, to the fourth. And uh, I'm missing a lot of terms here in descending order. I've got the y to the fourth. But now I'm missing the y to the third. I'm missing the y to the second. And I'm missing the y to the first. So I need to put zeros in for each of those missing terms to make this thing line up properly. But now it's the same process. y squared times what will give me a 6y to the fourth? It's going to be a 6y squared. And now I multiply what's up top here by what's out front. That's a 6y to the fourth uh, plus a 12y cubed minus a 6y squared. And again, that's just me using my distributive property here. I'm just distributing this to all three of these when I multiply. Okay? And I write it underneath so that I can do some subtraction now. Again, I'm going to change that to adding the opposite to make sure I don't make a sign error. And when I do that, that gives me a negative 12w cubed and a plus 6y squared. Sorry, a negative 12y cubed and a plus 6y squared. And I do the same thing. y squared times what gives me a negative 12y cubed? It's going to be a negative 12y. And now I multiply. Again, it's my distributive property. That's going to be a negative 12y cubed uh, minus 24y squared. Uh, plus 12y. And I actually forgot to bring down my, my next term, which was the 0y squared, uh, the 0y, so I'll bring that down now. And now I'm going to subtract again, which is the same as adding the opposite. When I do that, I end up with a 30y uh, minus 12. Sorry, a 30y squared minus 12y. And now I bring down the last term, the negative 6. And I do this th same thing again. Uh, y squared times what gives me the 30y squared? It's going to be a plus 30. And now I multiply. That's a 30y squared uh, plus 60y minus 30. And now I want to subtract this whole thing, which once again is the same as adding the opposite. And when I do that, I end up with a negative 72y and a plus 24. And that's my remainder, plus. That's a negative 72y plus 24 all over the y squared plus 2y minus 1. And that's it. Okay, so we follow the same rules as long division with numbers. 
So it's a little bit more complicated. Think of your division in terms of multiplication, and then just be very careful with your signs as you're subtracting. Uh, subtracting. Change it to adding the opposite. Uh, for this one, I can use synthetic division because I have a binomial of the first degree with a leading coefficient of 1. So when I do this, I have to put my 0 in the box. So again, think of it this way. If I think about um, this factor as being set equal to 0, x plus 3 equals 0, if I were to solve this, I'd find out that x equals negative 3. That's what I want to put, on the, uh, put in my box. So I put the negative 3 in my box. Now I write down the coefficients in descending order. I've got a 2. I'm missing the x squared term, so I need to put a 0 in its place, and then a 4, and then a negative 6. So now with synthetic division, I bring down this first value, and now I multiply. Negative 3 times the positive 2 is a negative 6. So it's what's in the box times what's uh, underneath. And now I add straight down, that's a negative 6. Now what's in the box times what's underneath? The negative 3 times the negative 6 is a positive 18. And then I add straight down, that's a 22. And now I multiply what's in the box, the negative 3 times the 22, is a negative uh, 66, and then I add straight down, that's a negative 72. And so now with synthetic division, I just have to, to recall what this thing's going to start with. Since this was an x to the third, if I divide an x to the third by an x to the first, it would give me an x to the second, which means my solution here is going to start with an x to the second. In other words, this is a 2x squared minus 6x plus 22 with a remainder 72, which I put over the thing I was dividing by. And notice I just wrote that uh, minus 72. I just put the minus sign right here to make it a little bit easier, a little bit cleaner. And that's it. I would also accept if you had a plus here and a negative up here. That would also be fine. Uh, number four. Number four is a little bit of a tricky one. Um, and I'm going to do this uh, in two ways here. Um, I'm going to do this one using synthetic division. And then number six, maybe I'll do uh, using long division. Uh, so number four, if I want to do synthetic division here, what I have to do is I have to divide each of these by three. I have to divide this one by three and this one by three. And the reason for that, again, is because if we think of this thing as a fraction, the fraction would look this way. I can change the denominator to suit my purposes. I do that all the time when I'm trying to get common denominators. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by one-third over one-third. See, when I multiply that numerator by one-third, it gives me this. It gives me a 2t cubed plus 5 thirds t squared minus 2 thirds t plus one-third. And when I do the same thing to the denominator, it leaves me with a t plus one-third. All right? And see, now I can use synthetic division because now I have a leading coefficient of 1 right here, which I didn't have before. Okay, so that's the trick that we can use in order to be able to, uh, to utilize synthetic division. And what happens when we do that, I'm going to use a negative 1 third in my box because that's what the solution would be if I set t plus 1 third equal to 0. Now write down my coefficients, the 2, uh, the 5 thirds, the negative 2 thirds, and the positive 1 third. I do the same thing that I would normally do. I'm going to bring down that first term. So I bring down the 2. Now I multiply. Negative 1 third times 2 is a negative 2 thirds. Then when I add straight down, a negative a 5 thirds plus a negative 2 thirds is a positive 3 thirds, which is essentially 1. And now 1 third times 1 is a negative 1 third. Then when I add these, that's a negative 3 thirds, which is a negative 1. And then I multiply, that's a positive 1 third which when I add a one-third and one-third, it gives me a two-thirds. So working with fractions here isn't too bad uh, because I essentially always have common denominators. But now since this was an x, uh, sorry, a t to the third, my solution is going to be a t to the second. And there's a, a little bit of an added trick here. This is a 2t squared plus t minus 1 with a remainder of two-thirds, which would look like this, two-thirds over the t plus one-third. And the, the problem here is I can't leave it that way, all right? I can't leave this fraction as 2 thirds over t plus 1 third. I can't have a fraction within a fraction, okay? So this right here, this remainder that I had is unacceptable. So what I have to do is I have to convert it back. And that's easy enough to do. If I want to get rid of the fraction up top, I have to multiply it by 3. Whatever I do to the numerator, I have to do to the denominator. 
And when I do that, in the numerator, that's going to give me a 2. So here's what I'm going to be left with. And that numerator, 2 thirds times 3, is going to be a 2. In the denominator, when I distribute this 3, it gives me a 3t plus 1. So now I'm back to the original thing that I was dividing by for my remainder. And that's it. Okay, so synthetic division can be used in some of these special cases. Uh, we just have to rearrange the numbers a little bit. We have to tweak it uh, just a hair and then make sure that we're left with something that's an acceptable answer. Okay, so this ends up being a, uh, a 2t squared plus t minus 1 plus a 2 over the 3t plus 1. All right. If I look at the next one, this one's a great candidate for uh, synthetic division. It's already set up that way. I put the 2 in my box. I write down my coefficients, the 2, the 3, and the negative 14. We bring down the first term, and then I multiply. I add straight down. I multiply. I add straight down. The original pro problem started with a, an x to the second, so this is an x to the first, so it's 2x plus 7 with a remainder of 0. And if I have a remainder of 0, I don't need to bother writing it. Okay. Uh, with this one, I can do the same trick that I did in problem number four and the one above it. Uh, but this one, I'll do, sin, uh, I'll do long division this time to show you that it works either way. So for this one, I'm going to do long division. I've got the 6y squared minus 5y minus 15. So now 2y times what gives me the 6y squared is a 3y. And now I multiply. That's a 6y squared plus 9y. And now I'm going to subtract, which is the same as adding the opposite. That gives me a negative 14y. I bring down the minus 15. And now 2y times a negative 7y will give me the negative 14. That gives me a negative uh, 14y minus 21. All right, I put a y up there. This one should just be a 7. And now I want to subtract this, which is the same as adding the opposite, which leaves me with a positive 6. So that's a plus 6 over the 2y plus 3. All right? And that one wasn't too bad by long division. But again, if you're good at synthetic division, that would be a little bit quicker for this one. OK? Please want to state whether or not this is a 0 of the function. So I just test it using synthetic division. I take the 2. I've got a 3, a negative 7, a negative 4, and a positive 12. I bring down the first term. I multiply. I add straight down. And then I multiply. I add straight down. And then I multiply and I add straight down. Again, it's always what's in the box times what's underneath the line. And I write it underneath the next coefficient that I was at. And then I start the process over again. And it's really, the question is asking me, is this a 0? Remember, the remainder gives me what I would get when I plug that value in. So the value I would get here is a 0. So the answer to this question is yes. x equals 2 is a 0 to the function. When I plug the 2 in, I'll get a 0 out. All right? Uh, same thing with the next one. I use the negative 3, so I've got a 1, a 0, because I'm missing the x cubed, the negative 8, the negative 1, and the 12. Now synthetic division, I bring this guy down. I multiply negative 3 times 1 is a negative 3. I add straight down. I multiply, that's a positive 9. I add straight down, that's a positive 1. I multiply, I add straight down. I multiply, that gives me a 12. I add straight down, that's a 24. And so when I plug this in, if I plug a negative 3 in for x, I'm going to get a positive 24 out for y. So is this a 0? The answer is no. It's not a 0. It gives me a 24 when I plug it in. OK? Uh, for this one, if I want to value it at 3, I could plug 3 in for each of the x values, and that would be fine. But I can do it using synthetic division. I bring down the 1. I multiply. I add straight down. I multiply. I add straight down. I multiply. I add straight down, that gives me a negative 28. So when I plug a 3 in, when I do f of 3, if I plug a 3 in for x, I'm going to get a negative 28 out for y. That's my factor remainder theorem. The remainder is us evaluating the function at x equals 3 in this case. Okay. And then the last one, uh, I want to evaluate using synthetic division. So I put the 4 in here. I've got a 1, a 4, a negative 17, and a negative 60. I bring down that first coefficient. I multiply, I add straight down. I multiply, I add straight down. I multiply, I add straight down. So when I plug that 4 in, it gives me a 0 out, my factor remainder theorem. And that's it.